Hi there, this is Maher here again. So we have to start now a new section and in this section I'm going to speak about the bridging. So that's a feature that is available on the Microtech routers. So what is the bridging and how can we profit from using the bridging? That's something I'm going to explain it in this section. Now let's go directly to explain what is the bridge and what are the benefits of using the bridge and then I'm going to start doing the lab to show you how you can configure a bridge on the Microtech router OS. So let's go directly to the explanation. So what is the bridge? Actually, the bridge has two functions. First function is to make Ethernet ports behave as a switch port. So if you have this Microtech router and this is the Microtech router that I'm using in my lab. So what you can do, say that this is the interface which is connected to the internet. Now you have those interfaces, two, three, four, and five. So what you can do, you can create a bridge interface. And on this bridge interface, which is a virtual interface, you can put the ports two, three, four, and five. So what happens is that you will be doing switching between those ports, meaning that the traffic which is coming to port number two and want to go, for example, to a device which is on port number four, then it will bypass by the switching. So there is inside of this router here, there is a switch chip. So this switch chip, what it does, it makes wiring between the ports where you are putting them inside a bridge. And since the version 6.41, Microtech has introduced something we call it hardware offloading. And what this hardware offloading does, and I'm going to show you that in the lab, once you put those interfaces inside the bridge and they have hardware offloading enabled, so then in any communication that is happening from one port to another, do not go to the CPU of the router. It just go to the switch chip and then the switch chip will send it to the other interface which is inside the bridge, which makes things to go much faster because the packets are not being checked by the CPU. Actually, here we are talking about frames and not packets because we are talking about layer two. So the frames are not being checked by the CPU because they are just coming to one interface, going from and out of the other interface and this is all happening inside this switch chip. So this switch chip, you have to think it's like a switch, which is inside the router to be able to wire the ports to be function to be behaving like a switch. And another thing that you can do on the bridging is that say that uh, you are going to uh, offer internet uh, from this router. So we have the internet coming from the interface one interface ethernet one and you will do the bridging between all those ports two three four and five and then we apply on the bridge an ip address we put an ip address and then we enable the hcp server so what's gonna happen is that whenever you connect any device on any of those ports they will be connected to the DHCP server because it's set on the bridge and they will be able to get IP address, subnet mask, gateway and DNS and then they also are able to go to the internet. So that's what is the main function of the uh, bridge. So you can make the uh, ports uh, or they wired to each other on layer two. So they are in a switch, you have to consider them and we have hardware offloading, which makes the communication from one interface to another on the devices much faster. And that's because we are using the hardware offloading. The frame do not need to go to the CPU. Now, another thing which is nice on the bridging is that say that you will put two, three, four and five, which are all wired interfaces. But then also you have wireless. So you want to put the WLAN one, for example inside this bridge and the WLAN 2. That's possible. You can also bridge them together with those interfaces, meaning that as well, if you enable the WLAN 1 and WLAN 2, whenever someone connect wirelessly to the uh, those interfaces, then they would get an IP from the DHCP server, which is on the bridge, because those are now part of the bridge. But there's something to mention here. Because those are different technologies, so this is wireless here. So that's uh, wireless, and uh, those interfaces here, they are wired. So because those are two different technologies, then the WLAN 1 and WLAN 2 will not have the hardware offloading. 
it's not possible that you can do hardware or flooring as well because those are not part of the switch remember we said the router has a switch chip inside of it so those interfaces they can be bridged with the uh, other uh, ports which are the wired ports but they cannot be hard or floating because they are not part of the switch chip so this is the second function of the bridge is to bridge two different network technologies like ethernet and wireless to be as one network so now we understand what is the bridge and uh, how we can benefit from the bridge now let's apply all this in a lab to see if this would work for us so what i have done already now i just reset my router there is no any configuration on the router you can do the same if you want to repeat the lab and then we will start doing the lab point by point so what is the lab scenario let's go and check it right away so this is my lab scenario as i said i have reset my router there is no any configuration on the router i'm going to enable the internet here using the icp client i'm going to put it in face ethernet 2 3 4 and 5 inside the bridge as i said i'm going to apply the scp server on that bridge and then this computer of course we don't forget to make NAT to be able to go to the internet and then this computer i'm going to connect it to ethernet 2 ethernet 3 ethernet 4 and ethernet 5 to see if it's going to go to the internet and receive ip from the dhcp server after i do that i'm going to add wlan 1 or wlan 2 or maybe both of them so the wireless i'm going to add them inside this bridge and I'm going to check on my computer, also the wireless, if I connect to the wireless on WLAN 1 and on WLAN 2, if the computer will be able to get IP from that DHCP server and to be able to go to the internet. So this is what we are going to do in this lab. Let's go now to the points and start doing that. Point number one, configure router one to get connected to the internet. So as I said, my router now, actually the name is Mycotech and not router one because I have reset it so you can see this is the router that does not have any configuration let's change the name directly to put it r1 and let's make it connected to the internet something we have done it before but i can repeat it so from the dhcp client we enable on the interface ethernet one and then now we can see that the router has got ip and if we try to ping to google.com to check also if the dns is working and here we go this router now has internet point number one is done point number two create a bridge interface put inside of it interface ethernet 2 3 4 and 5 then put an ip on the bridge of 192.168.88.1 as i have explained in the explanation part we're going to now to configure a bridge so we just make a, a new bridge here we call it the bridge one that's fine and i'm going um we should have stayed here and then from the port we are going to add the interfaces interface ethernet 2 actually one is the one connected to the internet then apply copy three apply copy four apply copy and finally five and that's it so now i have all those interfaces inside the bridge and look guys when we were adding them there is hardware of load you can see that it is checked and when we have added those interfaces you can see there is an h h means hardware of load and all those interfaces are hardware of load because this router has a switch chip so you can see inside this switch if we go to the settings you can see it has a switch chip which is like a switch actually and uh, this is called Ateros 8227 so this is a switch chip and now all those interfaces are being uh, wired together and are like a switch point number two is done point number three we have to configure uh, the dhcp server on the bridge and not so but we forgot to add an ip on the bridge so let's put the ip and then configure the dhcp server and then that so after we have configured the interfaces inside the bridge now we put an ip on the bridge and this ip is going to be 192.168.88.1 slash 24 and we put it on the bridge perfect now we configure the dhcp server 
IP, DHCP server, DHCP setup, and we configure it on the bridge, meaning anyone who is connecting to interface 2, 3, 4, and 5 will get an IP address from the DHCP server which is on the bridge. So this is the DHCP space address, the gateway, so this is the range, the DNS, and the reach time. Perfect. So now we have the HTTP server configured. And don't forget, always, if you want to allow the computers inside your network to go to the internet, you always require to make a NAT. So this is source NAT, anything going out from the interface Ethernet one action is to masquerade. Perfect, so now my router should be able to provide any device connected to it to go to the internet. Point number three is done. Point number four, check if your PC is able to go to the internet. So uh, my PC is connected to the interface Ethernet 2, and uh, I can see that this is the interface. Let's check if we have to receive IP address automatically. Yes. So uh, let's check if I have here, if I go to the command prompt, because it, is, it shows better than we see it from the interface itself. If I make IP config, for example, so we can see it has received an IP of 1 and 2 and say dot 11 I'm not sure it shouldn't receive that IP unless we have done it statically. Let's try again. IP config slash release. I will release all IPs and IP config slash renew. So now again the Dora is happening. And indeed, it has received this IP. That's fine. It's from this range. Now, if I share ping to google.com, we can see that my computer is able to go to the internet. So perfect. It is working perfectly. Point number four is done. Point number five. Now we need to move the cable of the computer, um, which is the one connected to the router, so actually on the router, we need to move it from the interface 2 to 3 and then to 4 and to 5 and check if we have internet. So what I'm going to do now, this is my pink, I'm going to make it open. And now I'm going to take the cable, so this is the cable in my hand, so I removed it from interface Ethernet 2 and now I put it on interface Ethernet 3 to check if we are able to go to the internet. So here we go, we have IP and uh, we can look here and over here we can check if we go to the IP, the HTTP server to the lease, so it has indeed provided an IP and it is working. We do have some request timed out, I'm not sure why this is happening. Let me check my configuration on my computer. So actually, there is no any problem on my computer. It looks like now it's flowing. Now I will remove it from the interface Ethernet 3 and I put it on interface Ethernet 4 to check also if it's going to be connected to the internet. Here we go, it is working. Now I remove it from the interface Ethernet 4. So this is the cable and I put it on interface Ethernet 5. To check also if it's going to work. Here we go. So you can see all ports now are working together. Now if I put a computer on interface Ethernet 2 and a computer on interface Ethernet 3, for example, and they want to communicate to each other, then the frame will not go to the CPU of the router. They'll be wired by the switch chip and it's going to work via the switch chip. So it goes much faster. Point number five is done. Point number six, configure the WLAN to be active and add it to the bridge. Okay, now, as I said, on the router, you can also add the wireless in the bridge. So as we see now on the bridge, we have only the Ethernet interfaces, but we can put also the wireless. I'm going to take uh, one uh, wireless interface. So this is on 2.4, this is on 5. Um, let's enable the one on the 5. So this is on the 5. I'm going to make, of course, we are going to speak more about wireless in this course. But for now, just let's make it an AP bridge. And we enable the AC only. 
and uh, I'm going to leave everything the same. Maybe here it's better to put uh, the country. So in my case, it is Netherlands. This is Netherlands. Perfect. Now I'm not going to put any uh, password, and this is the SSID, which is my critic. So this is, has been enabled. Now all I need to do, I just need to come here and add the WLAN 2, which I just configured inside the bridge. So now the WLAN 2 is part of the bridge, but as you can see, it doesn't have an edge. As I said, the wireless is never hardware offloading because it's not part of the switch chip. Point number six is done. Point number seven, connect your PC via the wireless and disable the wired connection. Is it connected to the internet? So let's check. I do have here, this is the uh, wireless and this is the wired. I'm going to disable the wired and I'm going to enable the wireless. So let's wait for the wireless to be enabled. And uh, once it is enabled, we are going to check if we can make it connected to the uh, router on the Wi-Fi. So now I'm going to say connect and I'm trying to see if I can show you because it's opening on the second screen. But anyway, you will see that. I'm now connecting to the Microtech. So just making connect. So you can see now it's connecting to the Microtech over here. And now if we go to the wireless, we shall see here on the registration, here we go, that is my desktop. On the wireless is showing up. And also if we go to the IP DHCP server, we can see that it has received an IP of 192.168.88.10. That was the previous one. Perfect. So now I'm able to connect to the wireless as well from my computer. Now, what I need to do, I just want to check if the internet is still working and I didn't stop the ping, you can see. So here we were trying to connect to the wireless somehow. And now we can see it's working. If you want, I can also have, this is my phone in my hand now. And I'm going to also connect to the uh, wireless. So I'm going to open the wireless and we stay on the registration and I'm going to go to the Wi-Fi and uh, look on the Wi-Fi for uh, Microtik. This is Microtik. I'm connecting and here we go. So you can see my phone now is connected also and it has received an IP address from the DHCP server dot nine. So perfect. Everything looks as we want. Point number seven is done. And uh, with this point, I have explained to you about the bridge, what you can do with the bridging on the uh, Microtech router. Of course, we, I'm going to add one more lecture about the bridging. Uh, so to speak more about uh, the uh, station bridge on the Microtech router, because that's also part of the bridge, but it's a bit different, of course. So this is what you need to know about the bridging. So I hope that this lecture was informative for you and I'll see you in the upcoming lecture.